Dear Diary, It's been a while since I wrote in this dingy book. Oh, how the time flies. No, really, time does seem to be flying. What with work, school, and YouTube, I'm barely even able to keep track of the days that go by. Speaking of YouTube, while well, my mind's on it, I'm kind of worried about my channel. That break I took hasn't helped my channel at all. Views are down. People rarely ever comment, and don't even get me started on the rampant demonetizations that have been happening across the platform. Makes me question, is doing this worse than anymore? Is doing what I do fulfilling that drive? Wait, Joe, you keep a journal? No. A diary? Yeah. So what? I mean, you learn something new every day, I guess. Never pet you for being the sensitive type. Good for you. Have a cookie. Now leave me alone. I got a passage that I want to finish. Wait. Journal. 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 Joe, you just gave me an idea for an episode to review today. Well, what are you waiting for? Do the intro! Okay. Hello there, everybody. Look, I have no idea what he's up to and I could just care less. You know me, you know him, we review the show about pastel colored ponies, and go to transition! Well, fame and misfortune. This episode could have been a bad episode. Episodes that usually go beyond the fourth wall and acknowledges its viewers can sometimes be a hit or a major miss. Was this episode slapped with Larson's seal of disapproval a good or bad episode? Short answer, yes, it's a phenomenal episode. Long answer, well that's why I expect you're watching this video. We start off with Twilight encountering a fight between two fillies, Tula Rula and Coconut Cream. Hey, you two stop wasting such perfectly good ice cream! Well... At least the banana split didn't go to waste. A short talk about friendship later and STOP THE PRESSES! I just realized something. Tula Rula has a different mane color than her tail. Has that happened before in... ever? I'm surprised by this, really. Someone tell me if that's happened before because I can't honestly remember another pony that's had that. Now that I bring that up, that could explain potentially why your cutie mark is a brush with a paint swirl. Anyways, sex is solving things between the two, Twilight remembers the friendship journal and goes looking for it, and wow. That book looks really old, beat up, and any other word you can use to describe a shabby falling apart journal. How long has it been since season 4? Man, it doesn't feel that long since those episodes happened. Makes me question yet again how time passes in Equestria. Since there hasn't been another Summer Sun celebration, unless it's been skipped, we could imply here that it hasn't even been a year. Or maybe Equestria years are just super long or whatever. Point being, you'd think Twilight would take good care of such an important book instead of shoving it into a corner and forgetting about it like that. And while we're on that, that lesson that Twilight said, friendship isn't always easy but there's no doubt it's worth fighting for, if I'm not mistaken, that's the lesson they learned in Return of Harmony. When did Twilight have the time to put that in the journal? That's a lesson all the way from Season 2. That could explain the many pages falling out of the book. Maybe she put it in on a free day or something. So Twilight comes and shows the main six of the book, and of course you can't tell what it is Rarity wrote, Rainbow, because it's all lines and squiggles! Calligraphy, schmigraphy, Rarity, it's not fabulous. And while I'm on my gripes, writers, we get it. Starlight goofed up royally. She did a bad. She doesn't have to keep reminding every pony what she does every damn time she's on screen. <sighs> Sorry. Got a bit carried away there. 
with the equestrian alphabet and starlight. <sighs> Sorry. I think I'm calmed down now. Got it out of my system. So Twilight gets the idea to publish a journal and send it across Equestria so others can learn from the main six's lessons. A very admirable thing for her to do, and it seems to become quite a popular thing, almost mirroring how the show became a such a quick success. However, it doesn't seem that the journal is having the effect that Twilight hoped for. We're thinking of putting together a Cutie Mark summer camp. Now every pony's definitely gonna sign up for it. This is gonna be awesome! <laughs> A cutie mark camp is a great idea. Yeah, but the purpose of the journal isn't supposed to be marketing. Heh. <laughs> I find that funny since the show was created to market My Little Pony merchandise to its target audience. We transition to Twilight crestfallen that the younger kids aren't getting the message of the journal when... Oh no. I recognize those looks. Those are bronies that have found a secret portal into Equestria. Twilight? Just walk away very slowly and act like you've never seen them at all. We're here all the way from Philadelphia because we got copies of your friendship journal. Oh wait, false alarm. They're just ponies that got the journal. We haven't read them. These are keepsakes. We gotta keep them in mint condition. Never mind. Those are bronies. That's something only bronies would do. Don't worry, Twilight. I'm sure lots of other ponies are being inspired to be better friends. And just like that, this is when the misfortune and fame and misfortune rears its ugly head, and we have to bear witness to how each of the main six is affected by their... <coughs> ...acquired fame. Surprisingly enough, though, aside from the one reporter cult that grilled her, and the one mayor that said the famous... Twilight was better before she got wings! Twilight didn't get much heat from any of the townsfolk. Pinky and Rainbow got very moderate levels of... Backlash from the town folk in the form of major annoyances. Now Fluttershy, Rarity, and Applejack, on the other hand... Oh, oh. They are the lucky ones in this predicament. First off the bat is Fluttershy, and she's harassed by ponies for the fact that... We want to know why Fluttershy keeps learning the same thing over and over again. Be assertive already! You know what? I'll just let Flutters explain. Listen up! I am more assertive. And yes, it took me a while to get there. But can you honestly say that you could learn something one time and completely change who you are? Yeah, exactly. Flutters may keep learning the same lessons, but it takes a while for real people... Ponies, in this case, to get something down past. I completely agree with Fluttershy. She has come a long way. A Health of Information is a great episode that displays how far Flutters has come, but I'm getting ahead of myself. That's a video for another day. Next one we gaze at is Applejack, and I can solve your problem in two words, darling. Restraining orders. Hey, kick out my own family? I didn't say kick out. I was saying restraining order, darling. Two different things. Also, I'm popular, Twilight. I'm popular and I don't like it one bit. Says the background pony. Hey, that's rude. Leave a door open, someone's bound to walk through it. Last one we gaze at is Rarity, and huh? Are you okay, Rarity? Whoa! FNAF eat your heart out, that's how you do a jump scare. <laughs> Every time. Every time. While I did enjoy Rarity's breakdown because they are always so comedic and well made, I felt the most bad for her. She doesn't deserve the hate that she's really getting. Sure, she can be a bit of a drama queen, but she's learned some lessons and has grown to be a better pony. Heck, my first review I did was on an episode where I feel she learned a very important lesson, and I stand by that. Shameless plug-in aside. This all culminates at Twilight's Castle, where an angry mob is ready to rip the main six to pieces with their words and tell them what's what. Talking is out of the question, reasoning with them didn't work, and having a heartfelt approach got zero ground. What's left to do? Why well, sing, of course! I never claim to be perfect, my mistakes are all written in ink. This surprised me the first time when watching it, cause there was no build up to the song at all. It just came right out of left field. But oh man, is it such a perfect song. 
The pitch is right, the music is good, and the lyrics are oh so key. They're right, they are perfect, and they have flaws, and that's okay. I'm pretty sure the show would be boring if they didn't have flaws and they're always perfect. Just like the song says. And what makes the song more amazing is in an ironic twist, the song doesn't calm the fans down at all. Of course, you're going with one this isn't because they're still arguing and throwing a fit. Genius. Nice the song wasn't easily turned into a David Sachs Machina device. So the main six retreat, disgruntled that their tune did not reach the crowd's ears. Where Stalag comes in now for the save, with Tula Rule and Coconut Cream to deliver the important message. Yeah, our friendship? Well, we were having trouble until we read your journal. It showed us that friends can go through all sorts of tough times and come through stronger than before. It's made us better friends than we've ever been. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, I can't tell you how much it means to hear that. Thank you for telling us. We've had a tough couple of days. But knowing we've helped fillies like you, it makes everything we've been through worth it. Well dang, if that isn't a writer's using the characters as a mousepiece moment, then I don't know what is. Wait. I think I got it. I see now. With the younger fillies getting the lesson and the importance of the journals, and the older ponies not getting the point of the journals and lessons. Oh. Uh... I can see now why some people got crotchety over this episode. The characters in this episode were basically saying things that bronies have been saying about the show for years. And I liked it. I didn't feel that it was calling me or any brony out. It was just a playful jab in the shoulder kind of jokes, like the kinds of things you do when you're screwing around with a few mates. I didn't think the writers meant any harm when thinking of the episode at all. I at least feel that they were trying to make a funny and witty commentary on the fandom itself, and boy did they succeed. This episode was a fun episode. Love the jokes, love the references, the song was good to boot, the lesson was relatable, and everything else just fit oh so well into it. I know people are, I know there are going to be some people that are against this episode, but that's alright. They're choosing to look at it through a negative lens, while I'm choosing to look at it through a positive lens. So, what'd you think of this episode? What'd you think of this review? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. This is only my third one, so I'd love to get some feedback on what I can do to improve upon. Also, why not drop down in the comments what episode you think I should review next? And while it's on the brain, thanks to Cadet Redshirt for making the thumbnail for today's review. It just looks so awesome. I got a link to her DeviantArt down below. Go send her some love. I've been Shoujo, and that's the end of today's show, everyone. I hope to see you all in the next one.